My name's Ellen Lamb and I've worked here at Burnie Link for nearly 30 years. In the state budget in 2015, we were allotted some money by the government to do a big redevelopment here. And as part of that redevelopment, a certain proportion of the money is required to be spent on public art. I think there were 14 applicants and some of them were just mind-blowing. The artwork was stunning. It's the first thing that people notice when they walk or drive up or down the street. Even the council members have commented on how much they like it and they'd like to see that kind of open, bright, colourful stuff happening in other parts of town as well. The public art program started in 1979 and that makes it the oldest public art program in the country. It's the state government's commitment to delivering public art for the people that's really placed out in the community across the entire state. So over the life of the scheme we would have commissioned more than a thousand artists and that's delivered over 1400 artworks into around 450 sites across the state. I'm a furniture designer and maker. People are often surprised what is defined as public artwork. We've made a boardroom table for the police station in Devonport. It was a five and a half metre long piece out of Tasmanian materials made specifically for the space and how they were going to use it. So to be able to understand this, how something's going to be used and be able to help the people who are going to be using it understand how you design as a maker, it's really great. If you can design something for the space rather than buying it out of a catalogue, the materials tend to come locally. You end up with a better product. You end up with a connection with the maker you're going to get something which is more functional, more useful, therefore it has a longevity. The environmental benefits are obvious. I think the thing about public art is it takes art out of the gallery context and it puts it where the people are. There's a really immediate connection and that connection might be one that challenges or it might provoke or it might stimulate, it might educate or it might soothe the people that come into contact with it. One of the things that I love about the Public Art Site Scheme is it gives artists an opportunity to work on bigger projects that they may not normally be able to work on. So with a creative project like Public Art Projects, it's that beautiful balance between creating something for a client and for an end user, but also that opportunity to express yourself and create something that has part of you in it as well. I try not to be too limited by what I can physically do myself. So if I have an idea that requires a stonemason or a timber worker or a, an element of laser cutting, CNC routing, I'll set up a team that can help me then produce the works according to my designs. A large proportion of the budget actually feeds out further into the, to the local community and that's something I try and do is keep all my suppliers local as well so the, the money's doing a good circle. I think it can have a really big measurable impact on the way people use spaces. So like the one at Springfield Gardens Primary, it's really a very direct call to action saying dig, get into the garden and you know, get your hands dirty, see what you can grow, see what you can make from it and I think that's exciting for them. The Prospect High School project was basically about saying to the students that this time at school is an exciting time, it's just part of a bigger journey, that metaphor of the eagle flying through various landscapes which would be familiar to them was a really kind of simple way to communicate that idea. There was another artwork that was put into the police station in Devonport which had some of those policemen in tears. It was an absolutely beautiful piece of artwork. A glass artist had incorporated the fingerprints of some of their sergeants that had died a couple of years before and there was a bit of a memorial for these guys. And it was done in a beautiful, simple way. It was really subtle but meaningful and so I think that potentially it could have been a hard sell. Why does a police station need artwork? But it ended up being a really successful project. I don't think we've heard a bad word about the artwork and it's really quite interesting to watch people coming up the steps and stop and look at it. They've tried to put bits of Bernie into the artwork and when people find the bits of Bernie that are in it, it's kind of like, wow, this is ours, you know, this is our piece of art and, and we own it. Yeah, so it's been really interesting actually. Mm.